as we take a look, as we jump into the corn market, that's the, that's the driver of the grains. That's been the Cinderella story since 2006, driven in a large part by ethanol, as Mike mentioned. We saw a piece come out today from the Associated Press. Did anybody have a chance to see it? It's front page of uh, Sioux Falls paper. It's going to be front page in a lot of stories. It's, it's another piece talking about how ethanol isn't as clean as it's projected to be. It's not a good use of government subsidy. It's a hit piece on ethanol, and it's timed as we're discussing the RFS. So the future of ethanol is going to depend in a large part on how we can react to stories like that and the stories we can tell. In the meantime, what we're seeing, I got to be on this side, what we're seeing in the corn market, we're seeing signs of life for those guys that still have corn in the bin. We've been watching that slide since September. We've been watching corn slide since harvest of last year. My chart just shows it since September. But the good news is, this is from Sunday night was when I put this chart on there. We've held, we had a key reversal on Friday after the USDA report came out, had a little more bullish action than we'd expected. Traders got a little excited and we reversed and we're holding steady. That's a great sign for the corn market in the short term. Hopefully we've put in our harvest low. I say hopefully. We do have a lower low out there. We could go down and test that 415. The market might want to see if we can still get some corn to move at that price. But I, I think it's pretty fair to say we're looking in that four and a quarter to 450 range for 2013 corn crop. There's not a whole lot of other bearish news that can come out and shock us. USDA had incredibly optimistic uh, numbers for feed and residual use and exports. So if those start coming in light, that could be a bearish factor. But if they're coming in as predicted, we could get a run back up to that 450. So those are things to look at if you're still holding on to some corn. Hopefully we're at a low point now. Hopefully we're near that bottom. If we get a rally, it'd be a great time to sell. There's a lot of corn out there, folks. There's a lot of corn. There's a lot of on-farm storage. When we get rallies, farmers are going to be looking to sell. And there's a lot of corn that can come to market when those, those psychological barriers get ticked and guys decide they want to start moving some. So the rallies we do have might be short-lived. Keep that in mind as we go forward. As we look out a little farther, as we look out to next year, as we start making plans for next year's corn crop, this is where things get potentially a little less exciting from a corn grower's perspective. As of right now, you can see we've got a little bit of carry in the market. We've got 471, got about 50 cents worth of carry in December 14 corn crop. Excuse me. Yeah, December 14. Is that next year? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Marsha did such a great job reading off all those numbers, and I can't even remember two. I don't know what that says about me. But uh, next, next year's corn crop, we've got a little bit of carry in the market. The market's not getting too terribly excited about next year's corn crop because there's a lot of uncertainty. We had 160 bushel per acre average this year. Tremendous average across the Corn Belt. And we were able to do that with Iowa below expectations, parts of Illinois below expectations, Missouri below expectations, and southern Minnesota below expectations on yield. The market is beginning to wonder what happens next year if we plant again close to that 98 million acre mark and the entire Corn Belt performs. With all the technology that we have bred into our corn plants and we get decent weather throughout the entire Corn Belt, we're going to have a lot of corn. It's plausible we could have a 15 bushel, billion bushel corn crop. It's entirely plausible. And the market knows that. But it also knows that we got a lot of guys who've been planting corn on corn on corn on corn and we're hoping soybeans might put in enough of a rally to get some folks to, to pull some acres back to beans. 14 might be a great year to do that. That's what we're looking at. How, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for guys on the ground planning for next year? Might not be a great, might not be a terrible time to look at selling some of 14's corn crop. There's a lot of risk on the table. 
There's a lot of risk on the table. We're looking at high cash rents. We're still looking at relatively high fuel prices. We're looking at stable, but higher fertilizer prices. We're looking at a lot of expenses. And for a lot of folks, that 420 to 470 corn price covers them, puts you in a little bit of a margin. It's not a bad idea to lock some of that in because we could, we could really fall off if everybody grows all that corn again. So the way things stand right now, soybeans aren't buying many acres from corn in 2014. We've really got to see a price rally to have it make sense for folks to pull corn ground back into soybean ground. In the interim, it's not a terrible price for December 14 corn crop. Keep that in mind while you're out there, while you're beginning to plan for next year, while you're looking at your tax situation and talking to your advisors. Something to keep in mind.